Good day, guys. There's been another awesome multi-core update for the GB300 and SF2000 handhelds. This time focusing on the Super Nintendo custom cores, SNES 9X 2002 and SNES 9X 2005. There should be general speed improvements across the board, but they've also added a few hacks you can toggle on and off to improve performance even further, albeit with some sacrifices. One of the more harder to run games on these handhelds is definitely Yoshi's Island. I'm using the SNES 9X 2002 custom core for this one. We'll just load up level one. So you can see it is a little bit glitchy when it uh, shows you the level intro or the level card, but it does go away once the level's actually loaded. So by default, I haven't enabled any of these speed hacks. So you will see how it runs just uh, out of the box. You can see it is quite slow. I'll turn the sound up. So it's still far from playable at its current state. The first thing we can do is we can toggle sound on and off. So hold down select and press L. You can see the little uh, black icon on the top left. That means it is now toggled off and there's no sound. And it definitely is slightly faster. I can already see performance increase just by doing that. We can also toggle frame skip on the fly, which is pretty cool. So hold select and press A. So it says one, so a frame skip of one. And that's even better. We can go higher to frame skip of two. So pressing it again. And I would say that's perfectly playable. It might still be slightly too slow, but definitely playable. We can toggle it to three. And it's even faster, but it does start to get a little bit choppier. And the highest frame skip you can toggle to is four. So that is a little bit choppy. I wouldn't recommend four. Probably stick with two or three with sound disabled. Pressing select and add again turns it back off. We'll re-enable sound. And there's another performance hack that we can toggle, and that's disabling transparency. So hold down select and press R. You can see the background layer has been disabled, and that has already increased the speed significantly. If we set it to a frame skip of one, that is definitely playable. If we disable sound as well, you can see it's running pretty much perfectly now. The downside is you don't get the transparency layer. And on games like Yoshi's Island, it's not too big of a deal. At least not up to the parts I've played. It is mostly just background. But in other games, it does actually make it slightly unplayable. We'll close out of this and we'll open up Donkey Kong Country 3. So we've just gone into the first level, which does contain a water layer at the very bottom. Let's get to it slowly. You can see it is running very slow, just uh, by default. Non-water levels run pretty well on this handheld, even on stock cores. It is just the water effect that slows it down. So here's the water here. This is what uh, is causing all the lag. So we'll start by toggling the sound off. So select an L. And that made a slight improvement. It is definitely uh, faster. We'll enable frame skip of one. So select an A. And that's much better. We'll do frame skip of two. And I would say that is probably the best uh, option. No audio and frame skip of two. We'll go back to frame skip off and enable audio. And we'll disable transparency. So select an R. Now, unfortunately in this game, you can see we can no longer see our character underwater. So I would say that's not really playable. You do want to keep transparencies on, at least in this level. We'll do frame skip of two with sound on. And that's not too bad either. Sound off definitely adds a little bit more performance though. Overall, this is a great update, especially if you're a fan of Super Nintendo games. There is no one setting which suits all games, so you will just have to play around and find the best one that works for each game. Most of the time, just setting a frame skip of two seems to be enough. And if you normally play with sound off, disabling sound definitely helps. For Yoshi's Island and the Donkey Kong Country games, I would still recommend the Game Boy Advance ports, especially with the newly updated GPSP core. They do all run pretty much flawlessly using GPSP. Installing multi-core is as easy as downloading the multi-core zip from the GitHub, which I will link down in the description below, extracting it, and then copying everything inside the SD card folder to your actual SD card of the handheld itself. I do have an older video covering how to install it, so I'll also link that down below. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.